In this video, we're going to look at some assistive technologies you can use to help you test your course for accessibility. We're going to look at three main tools. Helper Bird is a Chrome extension that changes how text is displayed, so this is why accessible text is so important. The Wave extension will run a single course page through a variety of tests and then visually present that information to you. It's not that useful for you because most of the report includes information about stuff you have no control over changing, but it's just good to see how a tool like that works in case you decide to do other kinds of testing for maybe web development or something. NVDA is the screen reader program we're going to use, and we're going to use that, of course, to test for screen reader accessibility. So the first step to doing accessibility testing is to get your course published as a SCORM file or in whatever format you're actually going to use on the web. And that way it'll open up in a browser window and it will function just as if it is online. Now I take it one step further. I actually put my course online. I really want to test my course in, in the real type of environment that it will be used. And I'm gonna show you how I do that. So first of all, let's start with just publishing to the LMS. So you have you know, this option and you publish. I've been told that using Review360 isn't the best way to test for accessibility. I have done it there before. I personally haven't noticed a difference, but that seems to be what everyone says. And so I just wanna make sure I'm testing my course in the live environment. Now, if you're just gonna be testing for screen reader, capabilities, you can test it just by clicking view project. You're not going to zip it. Just view project and then it opens up in a browser tab. But you're not really online. It's just going to function as if it's online, but you aren't really online. This will work just fine if you're doing keyboard testing and screen reader testing, um, which by the way, you always should test your course first with a mouse and make sure it actually runs you know, with a mouse. Then you're gonna test it for keyboard accessibility, which requires the use of the tab key and sometimes the arrows and sometimes the space bar and frequently the enter. You know, That's how they activate buttons. So this can also work for screen reader testing. Um, screen readers typically use the up and down arrows and the enter key. Now, I actually like to get mine online because I use some extensions and those extensions only function online. And so that's why I take my course online. So I'm going to just quickly show you how I do that. Um, I, I open up my files and then I actually use these files and I push them onto GitHub which is a free server. It's used for testing purposes. If you want to learn how to do that, I have another video you can watch on the YouTube channel. It's a little bit complicated if you've never used it before, but just follow it step by step. You can do that. And so that's what I've done. And that is the course I'm going to use for testing. So, so I'm going to show you helper bird and basically you just install that. It's very easy. I'm not going to show how to do that because it's such a simple thing. But then whenever you're on a page and you want to turn on accessible text, you just click this button and whatever settings you've chosen for your font, it will update those. So, so you can change which font you have, you can change the size, you can change the spacing. Uh, so there's different things you can do there. That's just pretty nice for people who, who want to read a different font or they need extra spacing for whatever reason. That's called helper bird. Okay, this is the wave tool and the thing about the wave tool is it is only going to test one slide at a time because it's designed to test a web page. And so you test one web page at, at a time. This is not a practical tool for testing a course because, you know, this course here is a small one. It's got 20 slides. That would be 20 different tests I have to run, but it's still handy to know how to use this. They do color code everything. So you can see here, you've got these color codings. And then over here, it tells you that there are some errors. It There's some alerts um, and, and structural elements and what have you. It just kind of summarizes everything there. And then this is where it's going to give you more details. So it's going to tell you um, for the errors, there's a missing form label and there's an empty button. Now, 
these things are things you usually can't control. So like this um, empty button, I don't even know <laughs> what they're talking about. That is nothing that's on my slide. So see, some of this is things I, I don't understand and you're not gonna understand either really, but it's just good to be familiar with it. Um, here, they're going, this is your focus order. So they're showing you the focus order and they're including the navigation. That's handy to know. And then here is your structure. And then it will identify any kind of um, color contrast issues you, you might have. And then from right here, you can also run a test. So if you need to test, um, Welcome to our accessible Oops. course that <laughs> has been completely redesigned to accommodate all types of learners. Well, to do the test, you gotta get your dropper and then the background color is orange. Okay. And it tells me what that looks like. So that does pass. So that's just kind of cool to, to, to see and understand that that is actually what web developers use when they're testing a page. So if you understand this kind of stuff, hey, maybe it can be of more use to you than it is to me. We're gonna now use the screen reader. So the first thing is open up the screen reader. Welcome to NVDA recording region indicator window. And go ahead and... Get help, get help window. <laughs> Recording region indicator window. Shut off your volume, volume control taskbar. Volume control window. Okay. And then you're going to right click on the icon down here. And sometimes it's hidden in this arrow. So you're going to right click and do tools, speech viewer. And this is going to now give you the text of everything that it is speaking. So now we'll pull up our project. Okay. So now I've got my project pulled up. I'll go ahead and click on screen to activate it. And now we will begin with the arrow down. This initially here is the hidden text box that's telling the screen reader how to use the course. And then I see it's a button. And remember, I'm always reading at the bottom. There's a button, begin course, so I always know I need to activate buttons. Then I have the slide title of welcome and I also have the heading of welcome, so that's kind of redundant, keep that in mind. And then and there's a hidden text box here that's just telling them what is being narrated to those who are listening. And then I have back to top if I wanna start over, but that's also an indication to me that the content is over, so I can use my keyboard shortcut to just jump to the next slide. Now I've got a video. And I'm glad this has happened because it's taken me right to back to top. It's like it, it, as if nothing is there. This is a glitch that happens and it is at random. So I've included um, instructions for my screen reader students that this could happen and that when it happens, they just need to choose back to top. And so when they do, then it will start the content over. So the, it gives me the video setting and then it gives me the video transcript. That lady on there seems very weird. She's crazy. Trust me, I know her. Okay, so now I'm on section one and um, here I am again. It's taken me actually right into the navigation. I know that's a problem. Now, again, it just happens at random. And, and it sucks because you think, oh, I'm gonna learn the screen reader and then I'm gonna just be able to make every error go away. Nope not what happens that's not how it works and I mean that's why I'm glad it's happening here because it happened to me and I thought it was something I had done wrong and um, I even submitted an error to storyline and then they didn't even have the same problems I had now you can see it's just like glitching it's doing it now to every slide even though I just tested this a few minutes ago and it was working just fine so anyway um, they just got to reset it and then it gives them the slide content. Let's just hope it's done doing that. And um, I'll just go th show you how they have to go all the way through the navigation to get to the next button. That's why that shortcut is so handy. Okay, so this is one that has layers and we were not able to disable 
the base layer on the layers. So I don't know if you remember that. You can pull up that file and kind of look at it so you know what I'm saying. There's a button that says next, um, content next, content next, um, content you are done. Now if I go down, you know, it's, it, it's just confusing. It's easy to get lost. I'm not lost because I built it. I know exactly how it works, but it can be easy for screen readers to get lost when those slide layers are not hiding or disabling that base layer. Okay, this is um, not accessible to a screen reader. Oh, and it says right here, it's a button. Please skip. Okay. Um, and it gives me the content that they're getting. And then I see it's continue. And you'll notice sometimes I, I go too far and I have to go back up. Um, okay. Select an answer and click submit. So how do they click an answer? Well, they just choose the enter and submit. Button. Disabilities. Okay. This is another layer one. Okay. Site. And it just skips right over the content. There it is. Now, I'm going to tell you why that happened. This is different. This is actually an error that I made. Let me show you again. So there's the button. Um, well, I went, sorry, it gets so confusing over here. Let me go to the next one. And I'm just going to show you what I'm talking about. I've already activated that button. It's It's gone. Now I'm going to go to sound. And I clicked down too far and I missed the content. That is not an error. That's a problem with me. And the reason is because, let me just go and show you, on here I have these transitioning. And because they're transitioning during this first half second, they are not accessible. They're not on screen yet. And that's how I got that cool swivel effect. And I really like that. And so an alternative here would be to just not have the screen reader access the buttons, just remove that altogether and have a hidden text box over here that just gives them the information. Because we don't want to take away all the really fun features for sighted users, right? We, we still want cool stuff. I like the swivel, so I don't want to get rid of that transition. So that is um, one work around there. But that's why that one was not happening, was not working right. Okay, um, select the statistic. Okay, here's another weird error. Sometimes <clears throat> it will announce a graphic as clickable, even though it's not. That's another common error. It's been logged. It happens at random. Yeah, don't even know why. I don't, I don't know what that is, but this is a hot spot. So I'll choose the number. Submit, continue. Section two, it skipped my content again, so I'll go back to top. And there the content is. And now I know I'm done. Next slide. Okay, remember the slider is not accessible. Let me move that over. Well, not that far. So let's see how I handle that. Get back here. Okay, common legal issues. And then it just jumps right into the content. And notice how it actually identifies the list. That's pretty cool. And then it tells me I'm out of the list and then I have the button back to top again. I know I'm done with the slide, I can move on. So that's how I've handled the slider for them. They don't even know the slider exists. It just gives them the content, okay? So that's another one, it's glitching out right now. Guess what, I'll pull it up in an hour, won't get any of them errors, it's weird. So um, another list here, so because that's timed content, I need them to have access to it right from the beginning. Okay, section three, getting another glitch. And it's over. Okay, five ways to turn content into text. This is gonna be one of them strange ones. Let's just see how it works. And of course, it's 
Okay, select each checkbox. So here's what they have to do. They checkbox they have to select and then they get the content. of can't I get this button click the button and for some reason that content was delayed let's just go see that could be because of a transition so I usually leave my file up you know so I can be checking on it it that's a transition so I need to get rid of that because it's causing a delay in the content being displayed I do not want that happening gonna leave it on this one on this one the the it's not so important so you got to just decide when is it important and when it isn't of course this won't be updated until I republish so we're not going to see those changes activated here um, okay close and you see how it's told me it's visited nice now when I go back to that base layer I'm not going to be confused hey I've already visited VTT got SRT close and it tells me that's visited as well so even when I go back through the slide I'm seeing oh I visited those perfect okay um, so this is just telling me what's happening in that silent slide working with layers okay okay so I'm at a button And you notice how it does change this to visited. But because I have not disabled the base layer on my layers, it actively shares that information while I'm on a layer. It's not that big of a deal. I prefer to see the visited after they've visited a layer. And here it's just going to tell them before. Um, I, don't, I just like it to happen after. Um, okay, button base layer, that's where I want to go next. That one didn't announce visited. The base layer didn't, so I know I need to go look at that. Something's going on with that. Um, and then hiding layers. And next slide. So on some of those, I have that hidden next slide button. Okay, this one's working great. Oh, it says use the tab key or your mouse. So I'm going to have to use tab. Oh, that didn't help me. So this one's got some issues, right? I need to figure out how to make sure everyone can use this okay and then um, now how do I get out of this right got a tab to get out but I need to make a note of that okay now survey select your level of agreement there's the statement and then it goes through all of these. So I'll choose that one. And next. Okay. I'll choose. Now, I don't even know what I'm choosing here, so don't take this as my opinion. I'm not even hardly looking over there. Um, so don't judge me. All right, I think we're good here. So that's your screen reader for you. Still full of errors and some of them you can fix and some of them will just magically go away.